welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. That is the R in the RK Stumbling Bear, and I am a reader and a writer. And I'm filming this a little bit late because I was on vacation. It was a great one. Love getting together with family and trying new things, seeing new places. However, I didn't want to film while on vacation, so I waited till I got back. So here comes my week four of June, a little bit late. I finished three things this week and DNF two. So I'm going to go first with what I finished. I finished Come Up and Serve Cold by Marion Deans. This is a novella and I read this for the Cristinelli Awards. This is one of the ones that the group of booktubers had nominated. This was not what I was expecting when I picked it up. It is set in like the 1920s during Prohibition in Seattle in a paranormal world. So you have magic users and you have shapeshifters, different wares of all kinds. And in this world, and not everyone has magic. So there is a council that is trying to regulate what type of magic is used and who is using it. So basically, if you're not from the elite, then you're probably doing magic wrong and they're trying to get rid of all shapeshifters. And this is where Dolly, the protagonist, enters. Now this novel is written in a very interesting way. You start off with Dolly's death and then you know something's not quite right because the person who is leaving the scene has a mask that uses an illusion on them and then it jumps a couple weeks back and you get to see Dolly taking on this job of being a companion to a rich girl who has been running around getting drunk and on drugs trying to help her pull out of that and then as you keep going it keeps jumping from the past, then I'll jump a little bit more forward, and you're going back and forth in order to construct what happened really with that first scene that you see in the book. So it's an interesting structure. It ends up being a dual POV. We follow Dolly most of the time, and then the other point of view we have is Violet. I especially enjoyed reading this after reading What Monsters We Defy, which is kind of the same period of time, but in Washington, D.C., but also with a kind of paranormal twist. So it, if you like what monsters we defy, you're probably going to like Come Up and Serve Cold. The second book I finished was actually not a book, um, but it was Spy Family Volume 2. This is continuing the journey. This is about three characters a man who is a spy who needs to get you who needs to get close to his mark and in order to do that he needs to have a family so he adopts this little girl who is a telepath but he doesn't know that she knows he's a spy and then he gets married to a woman who ends up her secret is she is an assassin so the telepath knows both of this and they're all living this quote unquote what looks to be a normal life trying to get her into this elite school so she can get close to the son of the mark. And not everything has gone according to plan, but it's interesting to see how then they navigate it. And then at the very end of this manga, we get introduced to the wife's brother, who she just thinks he's, oh, this great kid and very excited about life and very passionate about learning. And then you get to see, oh no, he is part of the secret service police in this country and that he very much has his own secret and a dark soul. So this is very much about people who appear on the outside to be one thing but have their secrets. And I am really loving this. Then while I was on vacation, I actually took a whole bunch of books and some graphic novels and in that last week of June, I read A Girl Called Echo by Katharina Vermet, and she is a 
Matisse author, and this book is about Echo, who is Matisse as well. That's a tribe up in Canada. And at the beginning of this, it was a little bit hard to figure out what was going on. If I hadn't read the synopsis, I wouldn't have known that Echo just recently was removed from her mother. And so she's living with her aunt and trying to come to terms, like basically, and try to come to terms with a new home environment, a new school. And at that same time in her school, they happen to be learning about the Matisse history and Canadian history. And she starts time traveling back, you know, depending on what part of history they're talking about. And she's meeting people from that time. And that's kind of where I got in this book. And I was, like I said, it was a little confusing of how this happened or what. But I did decide to continue with it. But I'm not going to tell you about the other three volumes in this series until next week because I read them the week I am filming. <laughs> so I do think this is an interesting read. And I, everybody should read it. It gives a lot of history, so it does get to be a little info dumpy. But there, there's more there. So it, it, go read it if you like history. All right, for the two items I DNF'd, I did end up DNFing The Art of Space Travel and Other Stories by Nina Allen. Just the style of the short stories were not doing it for me. I felt like they were wandering here and there and then would do a tangent. And I was left at the end of the stories going more what the heck has happened and why am I reading this? So I was, I was left feeling unsatisfied and maybe that was the author's point, but for someone who doesn't read a lot of short, short stories, I need a little bit more of a concrete ending to enjoy them. And then the other book I DNF'd was Those Left Behind by N.C. Scrimgore. This was one of our finalists for the self-published science fiction contest. And because I DNF'd it, it I'm not going to do a DNF review. I, I don't like those. So I'm going to go into a little more detail of why. This has very much classic elements of space opera, which I love, and which was drawing me through. I got to the 50% mark in this book. It, you know, setting up a bigger universe I thought was interesting. And the author, while they are writing, every point of view you're in is interesting for the most part <laughs> and the author like when you're in the point of views of all the characters are interesting but what ultimately made me decide to put down this book is we are following five perspectives and we always seem to be catching up with the perspective never actually going through the action um there's a few like notable differences with that but for example like with Ridley first POV that we see and then it, we follow Ridley getting on the ship and then the next time we see Ridley Ridley has escaped after um, some unpleasant events I'm not going to go into details in case you want to read it and during the escape gets has had it stowed away on a ship, gets found, and while we're reading her POV, gets found as a stowaway, and then ends up being taken to, like, a pirate queen. And the next thing we see Ridley, is she's still with the pirate queen, but then it, it, she talks about how she figured out this translation error, and how this item over here is a fake. And I'm like, you know what? We're not actually getting to experience this journey with Ridley. We're getting caught up after the fact. And I don't like that storytelling. I think that this book was suffering from having so many POVs. And the fact that they're all interesting and well-rounded characters, but they're not getting enough page time. And all five are different places. I mean, Ridley, Alvera, and Kojin at one point in time were all together and then, you know, split up. But Neil and Rivas, or Rivas, I'm not sure how you say his name, 
they were never like part of the group. They always were in opposite areas. So I know that the author is using these POVs to kind of show us a bigger galaxy, but I think that it was not working like they wanted. I think in this instance, it would have been better to have written companion novels, one maybe with Kojin and Ridley, and then another with Rivas and Neil, like they're simultaneously happening, and then you see how the events affect each other. And I am purposely saying, like, I would take out Alvera's um, POV. I did not feel like Alvera was adding anything to the book. And in fact, this is another reason why I put the book down, is because Alvera is supposed to be this captain. She set up a coup against a ruler from her homeworld before this journey. And then I'm like, okay, if you're smart enough to do that, charismatic enough to get people to go along with you to do this coup, and then you leave the person alive, and you're doing a coup because this person was experimenting on other human beings who she did not see as human beings, you leave her alive, and then you take her with you out of the galaxy to this new place. There are a lot of like military things that I was just like, no, that does that decision does not make sense. That decision does not make sense. That decision does not make sense. And I was like, I, I can't follow her anymore. She the decisions that she is making are emotional and not using her brain, which in the military you're trained to think not to just take orders blindly, act, but actually to think through situations because you don't always have access to a command. It, it just wasn't working for me. So at 50%, I DNF'd it. So moving into the first week of July, what am I currently reading? I have now picked up Aestis, the City by S.Z. Atwell. It's the last self-published science fiction contest finalist that I need to read. And this one is a chunker, so I'm trying to get it done before I have to put in a score. And this one so far has been interesting. It kind of feels like new adult to me. It. I read the first couple chapters and I'm getting definitely like a love triangle young adult, new adult vibe from this book. I guess I jumped straight into the relationships. It's kind of like a post-apocalyptic world. Climate change has really wrecked things. This society has built a city under the ground, but they they still use solar power technology. And our main character, is, Josie, is a solar engineer. So yeah. I will catch you up on my thoughts on how that reading is going when I do my next wrap up. And then what else I am reading? I am honestly just waiting to find out what the Hugo nominations are. They're supposed to be announced here soon. And for my writing wrap up, didn't really write planning to go on vacation and then going on vacation. Writing just wasn't in going to happen. But I did get in some of the presentations from the AuthorTube Writers Conference that SD Houston and Margaret Bernard hosted, ran, set up. I've watched two or three of the videos and I want to continue. The nice thing about this is these videos are up and are evergreen. So you can go back and watch them at your leisure which is good since life is really busy for me right now. I especially really enjoyed how to make covers in Canva that Nia from The Vixen of Fiction, Esther and Deluhar, and Laura Nettles did a joint presentation on this. And as someone who uses Canva for like my thumbnails and other graphics and for other things as well, I was really excited to see how, how do people do this. So. And for other media. 
you would think because I was on vacation, I wouldn't have been watching a lot, but that isn't necessarily true. Where we were staying, they had some, yeah, so where we were staying, they had access to other streaming services that I don't pay for myself. So I started watching the Great British Baking Show since I don't have Netflix, but they did. And we started watching the House of the Dragon on Max. And then my husband, I caught just like maybe an episode or two of the Righteous Gemstones. Yeah. So trying out some different types of shows than I would normally watch. And having fun watching them with my husband and my mother-in-law. What is coming up next? I don't know. <laughs> because there are primaries in August, this is a season of more door knocking and forums. So I'm going to be supporting my husband. And so I'm not quite sure what my filming schedule is going to be. Oh, no. What, uh, what's coming up next on the 17th? of July, I am going to be participating in Choose Your Own Adventure Readathon by Chelsea B. Zhao. I'll link it down below. She is amazing. And this is the second Choose Your Own Adventure that she has run. And this one, the theme is like fantasy or high fantasy kind of theme. And so I'm excited. The first one was science fiction, Star Trek themed. Had a blast doing that. This time the Choose Your Own Adventure is going to be over two weeks. And I think this readathon is always perfect for a mood reader because I never really know what I want to read, so I can read the prompt, choose something, then come back and do the next prompt, choose something else. And I'm probably going to vlog this one. I did vlog the last one as well, so just going to vlog it, vlog it, and have fun. That has been my last week of June. I'll see you soon for my first week of July. Thank you, and have a great day.